Let me ask you a serious question. That's right, I'm talking to you. Not the person sitting behind you, not that guy over there. I'm talking to you. What is your favorite elemental superpower in all of anime? I don't care you're wrong, it's soap. All right, I, I figured you were gonna give me the wrong answer. You were gonna say fire or lightning or something. I don't care. The greatest element, it's soap. And this is an ability that is severely underutilized in most battle shonen manga. That is why Khalifa is the only person that really has it going on. And she does have it going on, but you can't stare at her for longer than five seconds because then you'll get a sexual harassment penalty and we just don't want that here. So Barry, you better be careful, okay? So anyway, um, yeah, we're gonna be talking about the Awa Awa no Mi today. The Soap Soap Fruit, or the uh, literal translation of Awa just means bubbly, so like the bubble bubble fruit, I guess, would be another way of looking at it, but it's soap bubbles, you know, that's that's what she uses, okay? And, you know, soap goes by many names, you know, you got soap, you got Dr. Stone, you got Second, um, apparently we have nothing but Irish Spring back here, which is weird because I don't even use Irish Spring, I'm, a, I'm more of a dove guy myself there, but I found a bunch of this in my closet, so I guess we'll use that today. Um, what kind of soap do you use, Barry? Or you're a brick. Do you even need to... I, I don't know. I don't know what the hygiene protocols of Barry's species are. What are you, anyway? Do you even have organs? Or I'm sorry, I'm looking at Califa too much. Okay. So, uh, let, let's get down to the, the nitty-gritty, all right? So, uh, soap. Well, um... You can uh, cause the uh, ground to become very slippery, which makes it difficult for your opponent to stand up. I mean, no, let, let's seriously think about that. That is a practical ability. It really is. It's not goofy. It is kind of silly. But, you know, if your opponent's coming at you and it's like a level surface, not even a level surface, you know, because the user of the soap soap fruit could cause soap to appear and just bubble off of their bodies and it can cover the entire uh, area. So, you know, I mean, unless your opponent can fly or has some other means of of like um, attacking that doesn't involve them walking around, I mean, that would be kind of a crippling ability. Imagine like an entire army rushing at Khalifa all at once, and all Khalifa has to do is just walk out and just blow soap bubbles that hit the ground and make it all super slippery like an oil slick and this army's charging they're like raging they got their freaking battle axes they got their war horses they're galloping toward her and then they just hit this soap and they all just slam into each other and then they all slide down the mountain into a freaking castle wall or something all at once and they all try to get back up and they're slipping all over themselves you know um their armor comes out of it sparkling clean um but and they, they take off their helmets and their hair is just flowing out like in a shampoo commercial but they aside from that they are just physically demolished by Khalifa all right so that is a practical ability all right now Khalifa most of her fights when she had the bubble bubble fruit because she didn't always have that when she was first introduced in water 7 as a member of CP9 um she didn't have a devil fruit power she used her Rokushiki techniques mostly she used her finger pistol and her geppo to get around um but she also had her like thorn rose whip thing and she didn't really utilize that too much after we got to Annie's lobby. After she got the power of her soap fruit, she kind of disregarded the thorn whip thing she had. But yeah, she had this whip thing that she could just take out whenever. I'm not really sure where she was hiding it. Uh, but um, yeah, it had a bunch of spikes on it, and it, like she used it to grapple part of the sea train, like hook onto it like a grappling hook and pull it in. Um, so it was a very useful weapon that she just kind of abandoned once she got to the Tower of Law, and Spondum presented uh, her and Kaku with their devil fruits. Uh, in the case with Kaku, of course, he got the Ushi Ushi no Mi model giraffe, a zone, and Khalifa got one that actually at the point when she ate that fruit, uh, Spondum even mentioned that this one wasn't categorized. I, I don't believe uh, Kaku's was either. So it was really just a crapshoot whether or not the power was going to be beneficial or not, or even which one of them were going to get said fruits. Like, I'm not sure if they, like, tossed a coin, like, who gets the banana one and who gets the melon, and they just tossed a coin and, like, Kaku, you get the bananas, Khalifa gets the purple one. It could have easily been switched. Can you imagine Khalifa as a giraffe going up against Nami? Or uh, Kaku using the bubble powers against Zoro? That would actually be kind of funny. Like, Kaku has the bubble powers. He makes soap appear on his blades. And he's, like, clashing with Zoro. And Zoro's swords are, like, slipping out of his hand and falling all over the freaking arena. That would be kind of nifty, right? But, um, no, that's that's not the way it went there. So, after um, having the Devil Fruit powers, I mean, I think I can chalk this up because she was a member of CP9. 
um, you know, only having the powers for honestly a few hours, she was at least able to understand the basics of them. So honestly, if you want to look at it that way, her going up against Sanji and then Nami, um, she wasn't even that masterful of her ability yet. Like I said, she only had it for a few hours. Because of her training as a soldier in CP9 that she's had ever since she was a little kid, um, she was able to figure out, like, the applications of that. Like, okay, it's a soap fruit. So I can, like, make the ground slippery and I can kind of cover people with my suds, my sudsy goodness, and I can turn them into, like, slippery, weird abominations. And then I can also turn myself into a sheep. Yeah, only a few hours with the ability and she figured out the soap sheep. She unlocked that skill, okay? But just think about it. Like, she was given, like, a day or a week or a month to actually screw around and mess around with all the different things that she could do with her fruit. Um, same thing with Kaku. In fact, I really hope Oda brings that up because Kaku, of course, is now at least a member of CP Ages Zero. We don't know what's up with Khalifa or Fukuro or, you know, Kumadori or the other members of CP9. I'm assuming they're also members of Ages Zero. Fruit fly. Got him. Um, he's <laughs> buzzing around. I'm like, I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for my time to strike. Boom. All right. That was uh, Kill Count 1 on the Techie 101 show. We took out a fruit fly this episode. All right. But anyway, yeah, I hope Oda addresses this. Like, if we ever get to see a serious fight with Kaku again, you know, uh, maybe, I don't know if Kaku and Zoro would have a rematch, but if they did, we could have a moment where Zoro's like, I already know all your skills, giraffe boy. And freaking Kaku's like, dude, I only had that power for like two hours when we first fought. I've been training with it for the last two years. I've I've taken my giraffe powers to the next level. And he can, like, turn his, his body into, like, Tetris shapes now. You know, reverse T-block with the giraffe now. I'm not just a cube. I can turn into all these weird shapes. So, yeah, and I'm sure Khalifa's been training with her abilities as well, right? Um, you know how the CP9 had, like, a power level sort of thing? They had that Doraki, you know, the level that they had. I'm wondering if uh, Fukuro would do that again. I, that's kind of a concept that Oda only, like, dabbled with once, you know, during any's lobby, Oda was kind of dabbling in power levels all of a sudden, you know, just like, oh yeah, Rob Lucci has 4,000 and Kaku has 2,200 or whatever. Um, and then after that, we didn't really address it anymore, but that's because, I mean, CP9 really hasn't been in the story since. Um, so they're just getting back into it right now, in fact, at, like at Reverie, where we saw Lucci and um, St Stussy and Kaku and everybody. So who knows? Maybe if CP9 gets together again and they're all wearing white and they're all members of IG Zero, who knows? They might uh, do the dorky thing again. They might do the contest who know and we'll see how much stronger they've become at least numerically right so anyway, yeah, um, upon arriving in uh, her room, at least, uh, you know, Sanji fights her to begin with, and Sanji, you know, because of his uh, code of chivalry, he is a very knightly, very honorable uh, gentleman, uh, he could just simply not bring himself to kick a woman. All right, it's not because of anything like, you know, like, oh, I just don't want to or anything. No, it's just the way he was raised by Zeph. He was like, it was just drilled into him from a young age, like, you do not hit women, period. You just never do it. And so he just physically can't bring himself to do it. He's just been conditioned that way his whole life. All right. So I don't really feel bad for Sanji losing that fight. Um, he's allowed to like block Khalifa's attacks, but he can't raise his uh, leg, I guess in this case to a woman. So that's how Khalifa basically just covers him with her, her suds and then turns him into that like slippery abomination, dull kind of looking thing. And then just knocks him out of her room. And then he falls in the bottom of the tower of law. Nami and Chopper find him. And Nami is actually kind of like, she kind of, of chastises him for that just like how you know like this is a battle this is serious we're trying to get back robin and everything and more than anything i think that really just shows that yeah this wasn't this is something more complicated than sanji's personal preference okay because this was a serious battle this was a serious instance they needed to get these keys to free robin a member of their crew and still sanji just he just couldn't do it right so hey i mean think of it kind of like the same way that the germa siblings were raised by um um a judgy to the point where they just well it was also biological modifications there as well but the way they were raised was also a big part of this they're not capable of expressing certain emotions or just they just can't do certain things and i guess sanji is the same way with the way zeph raised him okay most of the time it never usually comes up because sanji doesn't usually have to fight women but in this case it did right so nami kind of chastises him for that but she i think she's also kind of like 
she she's sort of like, well, you are just the, you know, chivalrous knight, aren't you? And she's like, okay, fine, I'll go fight her. And so she goes up to fight against Khalifa, walks in on her taking a bath, because, you know, <laughs> that's how we're doing this. You know, she has the power of suds, so it's like, alright, I'm just gonna go and hop in the bath and wait for... I mean, that's a, that's a boss move, it really is. That really is kind of like the final boss maneuver in, like, a video game or something. Like, you walk in on the final boss, and it's just like they're chilling out, getting in their uh, feet, like, you know, massaged or something, you know, soaking their bunions, and it's just like, ah, oh, welcome to my uh, throne room. I am you know, Lord Kilgore, you know, and I was like, just give me a moment to get my bunions scraped, and then I will pick up my mighty battle axe, you know. I am so powerful, I'm so strong, I don't even need to worry about being prepared for when you arrive in my domain. You've already lost before you even open the door, kind of thing, right? Now, in her case, um, her devil fruit and her devil fruit weakness to water is sort of like a weird uh, balancing act there. Because as we all know, devil fruit uh, users, they get weaker the more they're submerged in standing liquid. It doesn't even have to be water, okay? Um, and when we walk in on Khalifa, she's about, like, halfway submerged. Now, there is something here I've noticed with these Devil Fruit users, you know, if sometimes it seems like when Devil Fruit users are submerged, like, halfway in their body, they seem physically weaker, like Luffy and Alabasta, like, when the water was coming in and they were caged up, he was, like, physically like, I don't know, guys, this is making me feel really woozy. And then other times, like, with Khalifa, you, and, and even, like, Aokiji during the uh, the movie Film Z when he was in the hot spring, you know? Like, they're submerged underwater, and, you know, in the movie anyway, Aokiji, you know, he was kind of, like, woozy, but he could still hold a conversation. It wasn't like Aokiji was there, like... You know, that's kind of how, like, Luffy was when he was being submerged at that point, right? Uh, Khalifa also, Khalifa was taking a bath, and it wasn't, like, a hip bath or anything. Like, she was submerged in the water, like, I think more than half of her body, honestly, you know? And then she had suds covering the rest of it. Well, hey, then again, yeah, there were a lot of suds in that tub. So maybe it was more of, like, you know, just a little bit of water, and then she just used the suds to cover up the rest of it, right? But she also has to be careful when she's actually submerged in it, because because she still can't use her full strength. Um, also, I would imagine going back to the fact that she is a, like a trained super soldier in a certain respect, even if she is feeling woozy from being underwater, she might be able to just suppress that so she doesn't look like it. She might be feeling it, but it's just like she's trained enough to be like, like, like hold herself, you know, uh, stalwart. So she's like, yes, I'm feeling woozy, but I can repress that for the moment. I can hold back my pain or my discomfort to like act all seductive to whoever enters my room, okay? So, so she, um, you know, leaves a bunch of soap out in front of the door when Nami enters. And this was kind of the first instance of her power, really, what it could do. When Nami stepped into this soap, um, it began to drain her ability. Or the way that Khalifa specified, it's just like it's washing your strength away. All right, so this isn't just, like, physical soap. You know, she can do it like that. Like, just make the whole room slippery and stuff. And also, I think you could also use soap to obscure, you know, your opponent's vision so they can't see you. Kind of like a smoke screen and she could just generate this whenever so she could just like rub her hands together and just like a bunch of soap bubbles could just appear and just cover the entire room and she might know where you are but you wouldn't know where she is right and moving around through soap is a little bit i know this is a weird goofy conversation to have but like imagine all right D, &D campaign ladies and gentlemen you walk into a room and it's dark and then all of a sudden you open your eyes and there's a character there's your opponent at the end of the room and then before you know it the entire room is filled with soap all right from freaking floor to ceiling Feeling, just soap. It's getting everywhere. It's a little different than a smoke screen, okay? Because it's 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 more solid than smoke, so it's actually like pressing against you, and like you're probably getting in your eyes, and it's getting in your mouth, and up your nose, and in your ears, and it's just like you're moving it around, and it's like you can move it without any effort, but you can't see anything. It's stinging your eyes, so she could do it like that if she wanted to. But it also has like more uh, nebulous abilities, more symbolic abilities, where soap is used to clean your body in this case it can clean or wash or make things slippery um off of your like I don't know, your, your, your spirit, I guess. Like, in the sense, like, what does it exactly mean when she's, like, draining your strength or washing your strength away? I is it something to do with your muscles? I'm not really sure. But in that particular instance, you come in contact with her bubbles and, you know, Nami dropped to the ground immediately 
not even having enough strength to stand up. All right, and then she got out of the bathtub really, really erotically, and then she walked over to the curtain, and then she unfurled her hair, and she did it up, and then she put on her outfit and her stockings, and then she walked out and revealed her powers, you know, and then there is a weakness here if the suds eventually dissipate you know they don't stick around forever eventually they're they're just like regular soap bubbles in the sense that they'll eventually dissolve it's just that she can make basically an infinite amount so that doesn't really matter um she basically just left those suds there for for the epic entrance so she could be in the tub and everything and just like hello there dear you know and drop nami for a moment so she can get out of the tub and then by the time the suds dissipate and all that stuff nami can then get back up and her strength has returned but then we find out another very erotic oh come on really oda that's where we're going with this i'm like all right fine <sighs> damn you kali fine your sexy powers there oh my god her powers are so erotic and so sexy there was even that moment when um she was revealing her soapiness she was like lathering her body up in front of nami and nami's like man i wish i could have a secretary like her wait a second i'm talking like an old man <laughs> so it's like it doesn't matter who it is her eroticism is absolute right and nami is quite erotic herself and so those two start wrestling in the soap and getting all slippery and wet and okay yeah i know it's cool all right okay so anyway um yeah that that happens that scene happens and it results in nami becoming super slippery which califa you know Remember back when we were talking about Jula in the Doflamingo episode? We were talking about the Doflamingo family. And we all know that I have a beef with Jula. I have a beef with any character that uses their devil fruits for the ultimate evil. The ultimate evil. Not taking over the world, not trying to control, you know, the pirates or, you know, manipulate other people. I, I don't care about anything like that. They could burn the world down with their devil fruit powers. I don't care. The one thing you do not do with your devil fruit powers is take away Nami's boobs, all right? That's the one thing. Jola did it to Nami, and I will never forgive that character for the rest of eternity. And now Khalifa did the same thing to Nami, but she's also got kind of... I, 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 I'm very conflicted here is basically what I'm trying to get across here. I mean, I'm not really sure how to approach this. She took away Nami's boobs, but then she's also really sexy, so how does this even out? I, I don't know. Um, I, I guess I'm just going to have to love to hate you. I love to hate you, Khalifa. All right, so anyway, um, Nami, the, the main problem with turning into this, you know, I mean, you can kind of just look at it and see the problems. I mean, for one thing, your body, you know, doesn't really have proper angles now. It's just, like, all, like, uh, slippery and spherical, so you can't even stand up. Uh, your fingers kind of meld together into one kind of, like, flipper fin sort of deal. So it's kind of difficult for you to even, you know, I feel like you were trying to pick up a weapon, you know, it's just like, all right, all right, come here, come here, come here, you soapy, come, come, uh, it, uh. <laughs> you know, that's not really going to work out too well for you there, and it uh, didn't really work out for Nami, however, she was able to eventually kind of grapple with the, um, you know, the, the, the climb attack to make it work there. She tried to launch a lightning strike against her, and uh, it turns out soap is actually a really good uh, insulator, apparently, because she literally coats herself in a bar of soap. Not just soap bubbles, she literally condenses them together into a actual bar of soap that has CP9 stenciled on it. Once again, this is only after, like, an hour of having this ability, she's already, like, molding her soap powers together and making, like, little symbols in it and stuff. I understand that... It's basically been said, whenever you eat a devil fruit, as soon as you eat it, you understand the abilities. So as soon as she ate the Awa Awa Nomi, she understood, oh, that's disgusting. Okay, Khalifa, what power was it? Oh, yeah, it was, oh, it's the Awa Awa Nomi. It gives me the power to manipulate soap bubbles. Boop, little bubble pops out. They're like, oh, okay, that'll be useful. But it doesn't give you, like, every possible, you know, configuration of an attack that you could develop. That stuff you have to work out on your own, okay? So it doesn't, like, immediately give her the knowledge that I could turn my body into a solid bar of soap and I can stencil words on them. Or I can become a soap sheep, you know? Like, it doesn't actually tell her that. That's stuff that she has to figure out on her own. That's why, like, Sabo right now, he has the Mara Maranomi and he used the Fire Fist because that was Ace's move. But Sabo might not come out with, like, 
like the Flame Commandments and the Dai Enkai and the Fireflies and the St. Elmo's Fire and all that stuff. Sabo might come up with his own, like, array of techniques, or he might use Ace's moves and then some other moves that he develops, because he uses, like, that pipe to fight, so he might develop a fire pipe ability. Maybe he, like, blows into his pipe and then, like, fire shoots out or something, like a blowgun. You know, that's Sabo. He'll come up with different methods to fight, kind of, right? So, yeah, only having the power for a little while, and she came up with these skills. So, yeah, apparently Soap, very good insulator, so lightning strikes her, doesn't cause any harm at all. The soap just kind of dissolves, and she's perfectly fine underneath it, right? Um... Now, uh, eventually, though, Nami figures out another weakness, and that's water. So, as long as water comes in contact with her slippery body or any of uh, Khalifa's suds, they will dissolve, okay? So she, so, she can use water to either return her body either partially to normal, like if only one part of her body touches water, it'll return back to normal, or if her whole body gets soaked dripping wet, then yes, it will turn back to perfectly normal, right? And um, the end of that fight, I mean, she does bust out the soap sheet move, and that does come very close to finishing off Nami for good, but the, the finishing move, the coup de grace, so to speak, here is uh, probably one of the more brutal attacks Nami's done, is she takes both halves of her perfect climb attack, and she just basically runs a lightning bolt straight through Khalifa's chest. And it, it's brutal. It's just like BAM! Like... A lightning, like a lightning bolt, and I'm just going to assume that the lightning bolts that Nami is creating are not the exact same level of electrical power that is generated by a legitimate lightning bolt like you'd see in the sky. But still, running that much of an electrical current straight through the heart of your enemy... Um, and she doesn't, she doesn't die, she survives that, she just gets knocked out, she's on the ground, kind of just passed out there, and then Nami, uh, kind of roots around her to find the key. Uh, at this point, Frankie has shown up, and Frankie is just watching Nami, like, rip off Khalifa's clothes, going in there, grabbing the key, and Frankie's like, Ow! Yeah! So, it's a very weird fight, indeed. In fact, I think Khalifa was the one that had the key, I think she had the key to Robin's cuffs, like, that was the correct one. So Nami's just like, we need to find that key now we don't have time rip you know um rip in terms of the battle and rip your clothes so that's uh, that's that's what happened um so after that though uh there was the buster call and she was saved um you know they go to that other town to try to you know save rob lucci you know he was in a coma they have to drum up medical expenses there so uh you know she goes out to clean the streets she uses her soap powers to clean the, the rooftops and the city streets and gets money that way so they can fund rob lucci's treatment so i mean it's a uh, power that's very practical in terms of like just everyday use you know i mean like i i it would be kind of handy if you ever see like a dirty floor or something and you just wish like ah uh, it's kind of like a commercial honestly like you know like oh man i wish i had some means of just immediately cleaning up this dirty kitchen floor and then all of a sudden, Mr. Clean just breaks into your house or something. Or, oh, did you ever watch Cyanide and Happiness? Like, did you say grime? And, like, Senor Clean Fist just busts in and just cleans the entire place by also punching holes in the walls, you know? It's kind of like Khalifa. It's just like, man, if only a sexy secret agent, you know, James Bond character were to walk in right now and then use her magical suds powers to clean my entire house... And then she does, she walks into your house and she uses her powers to do it, but then she's got you on sexual harassment at that point, and it's just like, are you ready to take the, uh, the trade-off there, right? So, yeah. Um, other powers that she could have with it right now, like, I'm just gonna go with the alliteration. She could have a soap shield, she could have a soap sword, a soap staff, you know, it's just a staff made of soap with a bar of soap at the very top of it, and then she can, like, wave that around and create more soap. Um, honestly, though, my ideas I talked about earlier, like, covering the entire room with soap bubbles... I mean, if you have observation hockey, you'll still be able to know where she is, but all the observation hockey in the world, armament hockey, conquerors, I don't care what ability you have, I don't care how much hockey you have, it is not going to save you when you get soap in your eye. Have That is one of the worst, sen top 10 worst sensations on the planet. Actually, top 5 worst sensation. And by the way, I'm not talking about like when you're in the shower and you got, you know, you're shampooing up your hair and maybe, maybe a little bit of it, maybe like the water's hitting the soap and a little bit gets in your eye. No, I'm talking about those very rare, because we're very careful with this, but these very rare moments, and we've all had one in your life, when actual soap, like a, a speck of actual soap from the bar finds its way in your eye 
or you go to like put some shampoo in your hair and you get just not just a little bit you get a glob of shampoo somehow in your eye and it's like you're in the freaking shower like ah ah you're like like two face from freaking batman or something like this sulfuric acid just got thrown on your face and you're just in the freaking bathtub you got to stop whatever you're doing you got freaking just your your eye feels like it's being burned from the inside out and uh my, my mom's trick for that because that happened when i was a kid a lot you know and i'm like my mom's like you need to run cold water over it immediately so i'd stop whatever i'm doing and like turn this faucet all the way to cold and hits my body and i'm going into like you know I'm freezing, but it's worth it because I'm like, ah, gotta get it in my eye, gotta get it out of my eye, get it out of my eye. And so, yeah, that that's one of the worst sensations ever. And if Khalifa can truly master that power, if she could just take a glob of soap and just throw it right at your face, you're screwed. The fight is over, okay? It's just she didn't have enough time to get to that power. That's the ultimate skill of the Awa Awa no Me user, okay? Just get a permanent bubble of soap that just surrounds your opponent and they can't rip it off no matter what they do and the fight's over it's just done right so anyway yeah um that's the true raw power of soap awakened uh you should probably just be able to turn the surrounding area into soap like she would be able to turn the ground into soap and manipulate that um maybe she could turn her opponent's weapons into soap you know that would be kind of neat to do you know oh actually i just thought of that um th this might not work if you can infuse your weapon with hockey but because most of the awakened fruit users we've seen, like Doflamingo and um, and uh, Katakuri, you know, they're awakened, but they also fought against Luffy. Luffy doesn't use weapons. He just has his body, right? What would have happened, for example, if, like, Zoro fought against Dofi or Katakuri? Could they have... Because the awakened powers, it's been stated, at least with Paramecia, they can turn the surrounding area and objects into their element. Uh, it makes sense that they wouldn't be able to turn living things into their element. Like, Dofi could not turn, like, the gladiators from the Colosseum into string. But what about their weapons? What about their armor that they're wielding? You know, would uh, he be able to do that? Like, would Doflamingo, if he was fighting Zoro, be able to, like, turn Zoro's katanas into string? Like I said, if, if you can infuse hockey into the weapons, then that might not work. But if it was just a regular weapon, like if somebody was coming at Katakuri with a spear and like, Katakuri, I'm gonna run you through! Katakuri, could he just use his mochi powers to turn the spear into mochi? And just... Well, crap, and then just punch him in the face. Like, could that work? I don't know. But, um, yeah, she could just probably turn the surrounding area into soap. That's probably not a very complicated awakening ability. It's pretty clear. It's like if you can generate some kind of element or some kind of substance with your power, it, at least it seems like the awakening is just you can turn any object into that substance, and that's, that's all there is, too. But, you know, I'm looking forward to see the other members of CP9 that have kind of gone, you know, AWOL for the moment. I'm sure Kumadori and Jabra, I want to see Jabra again. I'm sure he's still around. Uh, Khalifa, of course. Fukuro. I even like Fukuro. You know, Fukuro is cool. I like the way he talked. I like the fact he had a zipper for a mouth. Whatever. I like owls. So, yeah. And then, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what's up with Khalifa. Alright, well, thanks for watching everybody. Uh, the sexual harassment lawsuits, they'll all be in the mail, so just keep an eye out for those. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Techie101 soaping out. Why, why did I do that? Why, why the hell did I do that? Why, that wasn't worth it. I don't care. I don't care how many views this video gets. That wasn't worth it. <clears throat>